chapter 10. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Labias, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves, be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. 
He that receiveth you, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. It's not conservative or liberal, however they're defined. It's not about interpretation or the judgment of the mind. It's the opposite of politics, power or prestige. It's about a simple message and whether we believe it's still the cross It's still the blood of Calvary That cleanses sin Only Jesus can set the captives free It's still the name The name of Jesus That has power to save the lost It's still the cross Oh, we can water down theology And preach a word to suit our own needs We can justify sweet, subtle lies That are wrapped in noble deeds And we can alter our convictions To adapt to our social whims But we cannot change the gospel or the truth contained within It's still the cross It's still the blood of Calvary That cleanses sin Only Jesus can set the captives free It's still the name The name of Jesus That has power to save the Lord is still the cross For well, some may say it's man's religion Or ancient history But you know the cross of Jesus Still remains the price for sin The Lord that sets us free Is still the cross Is still the blood of Calvary that cleanses sin Only Jesus can set the captives free It's still the name Oh, but it's the name of Jesus That has power to save the lost Is still the cross Yes, Lord Yes Till your cross Oh yes, it's till the cross In September 1996, Hurricane Fran slammed into the Carolinas. In the storm's aftermath, Georgia power worker Rick Moncrief was assigned to clear downed power lines in North Carolina. He was on a rooftop trying to pull a line from under a fallen tree when the line snapped. He fell backwards and landed head first on the concrete driveway. He was flown to Duke Medical Center. His wife Donna was told to prepare for her husband's funeral. I felt a lot of fear. 
and I felt concerned. And I, I, I had this every scenario going through my brain. How am I going to raise three daughters by myself? Um, I'm too young to be a widow. You name it. Those kind of thoughts came through my head. Rick had several broken ribs, and his brain was hemorrhaging. Ten minutes after he arrived at the hospital, he slipped into a coma. He was hooked up to a breathing machine and all kinds of machines. And so I just... I don't. I, I just looked at him. You know, I was like, I, I was in shock. I think I couldn't believe that he was laying there. And the doctors were just saying that it was a wait and see game. They didn't know. I believed in prayer, and I knew that Jesus was the healer. In my own strength, right at that moment, I didn't have that that strength in myself to pray. And so I had believers and friends who were praying for me, as well as for Rick, that we would, you know, that we would be able to come through this. The prayers continued, and by day five, Rick was still unresponsive. At least, it appeared that way. I was taken into the throne room of God. It was more real than you are. It was so real, and everything was just so white, whiter than white. And I I was on my belly, on my face before the Lord, and I saw his feet. I didn't see his face, but he asked me, what do you want to do? And I kept hearing the scripture over and over. Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the Lord or believe the report of the doctors? And I said, I want to live. I want to live and declare the word of the Lord. And he stood up and he clapped his hands and he said, that's enough. And when he said, that's enough, I began immediately to come out of the coma. His doctor said Rick would never be the same again. Rick and Donna believed differently. She said, well, you're the most luckiest person in the world now that you ever came out of this coma. And you recovered from this fall a little bit, but it'll be 60 months minimum, which is five years, before you will ever be 40% back. And I told her, I said, no, ma'am. I said, I don't mean any disrespect at all to you, but I said, it's not going to take that long. The Lord's going to do a quick work. During rehab, Rick says he read Psalms in the Bible, and he and Donna joined their friends and family in prayer. I was believing for the healing, and my friends were believing for the healing, because we believe by his stripes we are healed. Each day his health improved, and after just 27 days of rehab, Rick had a 95% recovery. When I came back to work at the power company in the early part of 1997, I came back to work full duty. The faithfulness of God comes to my mind. That our God, at the at the immediate cry of our heart, will hear us, and He listens, and He's faithful. The great doctors at, at these two great hospitals did all they could do, but it was the Father's love. It was His grace. It was His compassion on me to allow me to live today and, and live these 18 years since this has happened. Rick later retired from the power company and became a pastor. He cherishes every moment he has with his wife and family and says he doesn't let a day go by without giving thanks to God for his miraculous healing. Every day is an incredible day. Every day is just, there's always a lot to be thankful for. I'm just thankful that I feel better today than I did yesterday. I'm thankful today that I'm able to stand up. I'm thankful today I don't have a a massive headache this morning. I'm thankful today that I'm able to breathe by myself without a machine. I'm just thankful. For those of you who are present, we have a product available uh, in the appropriate place as soon as service is over. I ask that you'll please uh, join us there, but given the gravity of the moment, I hasten to the text. Numbers chapter 13, verses 30 through 33. Once you found it, once you say, I got it. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we certainly can do it. Would you look at the person beside you and tell them, We can do it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. 
And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of a great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak, come from Nephilim. We seem like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we look the same to them. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach for the time that has been loaned to me, using as a subject, you can't stay this size. You can't stay this size. Look at the person beside you and tell him he's preaching to you tonight. It ought to be noted on such a historic night as this that Ecclesiastes aptly reminds us that there is nothing new under the sun. Whenever there is a transfer of power from the Vatican and a new voice is about to emerge, the College of Cardinals are cloistered brought into seclusion inside the bellows of the Vatican. The door is closed and a secret ballot takes place. And after a secret ballot takes place, after 45 minutes, the porch door opens. And when the porch door opens, a new pontiff emerges introducing to the world who will in fact lead as the moral standard. There was a wrinkle in protocol this past April because ordinarily because the guidelines suggest it should be 45 minutes but in April it was an hour in 15 and what most of us did not realize while we were waiting tuned in to CNN and MSNBC because white smoke had billowed from the chimney we assumed appropriately that somebody had been selected 45 minutes came and left and still the balcony doors were not open what we did not know ladies and gentlemen is that after Pope Francis was elected they escorted him into the vestry. And when they took him into the vestry, there were only three papal garments. And the three pope robes that had been selected, none of them could fit him. So they had to call the seamstress in from down the street, swear her into secrecy. She had to make the appropriate alterations. And an hour and 15 minutes later, the doors swung open and a new person emerged. I'm here tonight to preach to somebody who's frustrated because they feel like they're running behind schedule. Feel like they should be in another position. Feel like they should be standing in another place. God told me to tell you, be not weary in well-doing. You've already been elected. You only have one problem. The stuff people been trying to put you in don't fit you. That there's a new assignment on your life and you are not going to be able to fit in the old model of how people used to do things. There's, there's a new anointing that's getting ready to pour out. And, and many of you have been frustrated because you've been trying to fit in with regular people when you have a supernatural anointing. God, God said, just stay where you are. I'm about to make alterations. The thing you're supposed to fit in is about to be adjusted just for you. That, that, that there is somebody here under the sound of my voice who doesn't even understand that in the celestial realm something is being adjusted 
for the position you are about to assume. God, God is shifting some things while you're in Louisville that by the time you get back home is going to fit you a little bit differently. You, you've been having to shift who you are just to make mediocre people feel comfortable. God, God told me to tell you in this season, I'm going to get your garments that fit who you are. You ought know, ladies and gentlemen, that for three centuries in China, they, they, they practiced something called lotus feet. Lotus, L-O-T-U-S. Lotus feet is, in fact, a practice because Chinese men for three millennia, 300 years, believed women with small feet were more attractive. So as a consequence, when a Chinese woman reached the ripe age of 10, they would bind her feet so that they would not grow any further. The problem is, is that once the feet were bound, they could not run. Once the feet were bound, they could not make tremendous strides. Once the feet were bound, they could not make tremendous steps. They were bound at 9, 10, 11 years of age, but by the time they were 35, they had anatomical challenges. They could not stand up straight. They needed the assistance of a crutch and needed, in many cases, canes because when their feet were bound, they could not walk in the same kind of gait that was afforded their upper body strength. I'm not even preaching to you. I'm preaching to somebody behind you who doesn't even know that the enemy's been trying to bind your feet. Uh, he, because uh, he doesn't want you to go too fast. He's been trying to slow you down. And if he can minimize the capacity of what you get ready to go into, he will have victory. But I came to tell 800 of you, you get ready to step into the biggest season of your life. Whatever the enemy been trying to do to slow you down and to keep you bound, God said, if you make one more step, you're going to step into a new anointing. You, you're going to step into to another assignment and step into another gift. Oh, Maybe that's too historical and not theologically. Um, um, uh, maybe it's not theologically attuned enough. And so let me cross pollinate by giving you Daniel chapter 3. You remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came upon a, a cruel, despotic leader named King Nebuchadnezzar who told them to bow down in front of a gold god, but they refused to bow down. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen, they refused to bow down. He said, I'm going to turn the furnace up seven times hotter than what it ordinarily is. And theologians, historians, and Bible scholars tell us that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are only between 14 and 17, but they get the mightiest men. They get the mightiest men. And because you're a smart people, you're asking if they're only 14 years of age, why does the enemy attack the mightiest men to them? Hear me, because he wants to subdue not their presence but their potential. When you go back over your life and remember what you went through from 14 to 17, you should have had a nervous breakdown. But somehow or another, because God's hand was on your life, even with what you went through, you're able to say, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Watch this, and they, they bound up their hands and, and bound up their feet. Hear me, uh, those of you who are old school understand that a furnace doesn't have an emergency exit. Uh, there's only one way in and there's only one way out. And the critical question you've got to be asking the text is why, if you're throwing me into the furnace, are you binding my feet? Mm -hmm. uh, if in fact this is uh, an Asiatic practice, why in the Middle East are you binding? up my feet is because here it is the enemy was scared of them shouting under fire mm. because he knew that there was something crazy that happens when a believer can praise him when they're under fire see some of y'all in order for you to shout you need a choir and you need a praise team and, and you need a ham and b3 organ to get in the mood but but i need some folk that know in order for me to give god glory all i need is a flashback to Think about how bad life was for me, and I can praise him under fire. Uh, and, uh, 
Something strange happens. Ladies and gentlemen, be seated. Something strange happens is that the stenographer for the military shows up. He shows up and wipes the steam from the glass and peers in and does inventory and sees, here it is, Houston, we got a problem. I, 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 I see four men, and, and here's the miracle that you miss. I see four men, and they're walking around. Now, they're not supposed to be walking around because their feet are bound. Mm. But when they begin to give God glory in fire, everything that had them in bondage got off of them. I, some of y'all miss your shout. God said, when you praise me tonight, whatever's been tying your life up is getting ready to come off of you. What, whatever's been slowing you down is going to have to fall off. says to them, uh, they're walking around when they should be in bondage because I want to minimize how fast they go. I, I want to obstruct what they're getting ready to step into. And ladies and gentlemen, as we jaywalk into the text, uh, you'll notice in Numbers chapter 13, uh, watch this, in Numbers chapter 13, uh, uh, Moses is in fact having his holy convocation. Uh, he's having his holy convocation and he brings his leaders together and says, where we are now is not where we're supposed to be. There is something bigger in store for us. Would you elbow your neighbor, tell him, don't get satisfied where you are now. This, 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 this is not even scratching the surface for where you getting ready to go. God, God is getting ready to throw you a personal surprise party. He, he's going to give you what eyes have not seen and what ears have not heard. He said, don't get comfortable. Here it is because we get ready to step into something big. Yes. <sighs> We, we get ready to step into something big. I, 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 I got to move, but I, I feel something resonating in the room. I, I, I need 800 of you who just feel something. Get ready to shift on your behalf. Hear me, would you just declare out loud, something big is getting ready to happen to me. Some, I, if, if you don't believe it, I don't want you to say anything. But, but if there is something in you that tells you that I'm getting ready to take off, I need you to shout it out loud. Something big is getting ready to happen for me. Be seated, please. Something, something big is, is getting ready to happen for me, even at the risk of looking crazy uh, to the people who are sitting around you. Uh, even if you got to talk to yourself, would you just say it out loud? Something big is, is getting ready to happen to me. If you feel like your life is in transition and this is the smallest you ever going to be, but God is getting ready to do something crazy in your life. I need you to shout out loud. Something big is getting ready to happen to me. Be seated. Hallelujah. Be seated unless you feel like you get ready to cash your biggest check. Be, be seated if God help me. Unless you know you get ready to move into your biggest house. Be, be, be seated unless you know the biggest door of your life is getting ready to be open in your life. I need you to shout something big is getting ready. Ah, be seated please. Be be seated, please. Hey. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Something big is, is getting ready to happen to me. Don't, hallelujah. Don't you expend no energy on people who ain't going nowhere. Uh, would, would you just look down your row and say, he ain't preaching to you, he preaching to me. Something big is getting ready to happen to me. When, the next time you see me, you won't even recognize me. Something big is God getting ready to bless me beyond anybody in my family. Something big is... <laughs> says, uh, I got three million people in the camp but I only need 12 of you 
I got three million people watching on television, on the internet, but there are only 12 of you qualified. Because I need an advanced team. I need an advanced team. And the only qualification is uh, you got to have a different set of eyes. You, you can't see things for how they are. Hallelujah. But you got to have a sneak preview of coming attractions. You, you, you got to see it for what it's getting ready to be. Would you look at your neighbor, tell him you got it twisted. You got it twisted. I am not shouting for what I got now. I don't have that much. I'm shouting for what I seek in my future. I, I'm shouting for where I see myself. Be seated, please. Please. Um, say so. How many 12 people who can see into the realm of the not yet? Like it's already so. I, hallelujah. I, I only need 12 people in the room who understand for God, money is not an issue. I, I, that, that, that ain't for everybody. This, this is only for those of you who know you're going to get a job you're not qualified for. That, that God going to give you stuff that don't match your credit report. That, that God is going to jump you over folk that think that they smarter than you. God is getting ready. And he sent them, he sent them to go scout out the land. And when they went to go scout out the land, uh, they came back with a report. And Moses asked them, what kind of people live there? For where we going? And they said, for where we're going, strong people live there. I want to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time to downsize your circle. Uh, I'm talking to those of you, y'all ain't ready to be honest. I'm tired of being the bigger person. I'm, I'm tired of having to buy everybody lunch. I'm, I'm tired of having to encourage everybody else. Who gonna be there to pour back into me? You can only be around strong. You need people around you in this season who will not second guess your assignment, who will not talk you out of your call, who will not be insecure or jealous about your promotion. You, you need some people who will cheer for you even if you go past them. Look at your neighbor. Tell them I'm not like your other friends. Look at me and I tell them I'm not jealous of you. Y'all ain't talking good. Look at them. Tell them I'm not threatened by you. Look at somebody else. Tell them I'm not intimidated. And to prove it to you, when I give God this next shout, I'm not even shouting for me. I'm shouting for where you going. I can't hear nobody. If they not shouting for you,
they only grow one thing. They only grow grapes. Now here's what's getting ready to miss you. Um, is when they go into the place to spy out the land. Watch this. It is not. Uh, it is not sowing season. It is not planting season when they get there. Watch this. The grapes are already grown. Y'all get ready to miss it. But they didn't plant the grapes. The enemy planted the grapes. And they go in the enemy's camp. And take God. I can't hear nobody. This is for a thousand of you. The wealth of the wicked. What they're getting ready to get is not their size. You just missed it. I said what they are getting ready to receive is not their size. Would you prophesy to your neighbor and tell them your blessing is bigger than you? Watch this. They got a cluster of grapes. All right, watch this. They got a cluster of grapes and, and they run a pole through it. They run a pole through it and they've got to lift it up over their shoulders. God help me just to carry it. It's so big, it's too much for just one person. Uh, y'all dismiss it. The, the yellow bus is coming. Y'all are in the slow class. I, I, I need you right where you are. But you just elbow, just elbow your neighbor and say, you sure you want to sit next to me? You, you sure you want to be close to me? Because whoever is close to me in this season is going to be able to live off my overflow. Whoever is close to me in this season. All right. Be seated. Please be seated. I'm I'm AME. I'm not used to all of this. Be seated. Uh, right where you are. Would you just open up your hands? It's, yes, open it up. Uh, yes, open it up. It's, it's too big uh, for you to handle by yourself. God, I feel God getting ready to come in the room. He said, your next blessing is so big, you're going to be able to pay, hallelujah, for your nieces and nephews' tuition. I, I can't hear no worshipers. God said, if you give me glory, I'm paying our student loans by January. He, he said, if you praise me, I'm putting equity back in your house. I need you to shout like it's too big. Be seated, please. Be seated. Be seated. Please, be seated. Y'all got a spirit of disobedience. Be seated. Uh, hallelujah. 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 Be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I just got cleared for takeoff. L look at your neighbor. Tell him after tonight, you ain't going to have to ask nobody for nothing. Everything you need, you Be seated, please. Uh, right where you are, be seated. Um, says, um, he asked them a critical question Shall we pursue? Shall we go after it? This is not a word for people who play it safe. This is a word for dangerous dreamers. Uh, for people who think outside of the box. For, for folk the dream on your life is so heavy you can't even sleep at night. And God wakes you up with dreams and vision. And you can't even focus because of what he's put in your spirit. He says to him, uh, are we going to go after it? What I showed you is supposed to be yours. What I promised 
the ancestors who went before you? Or are you going to be satisfied just doing church? I can't hear nobody in here. When you give God this next sound of glory, it's got nothing to do with Bishop Morton. God help me. It's got nothing to do with full gospel. Here's for the radical believers in the room. I need you to shout, watch this, like your own dream coming to pass. If you ain't dreaming nothing, shut up. But if you got a dream, open up your mouth like I'm doing for Be seated, I am. I only got three more times to tell you that. Be seated. Um, right where you are. And Moses asked him, are we going to go after it? And, um, and he said, Bishop, we can't go after it. We got a problem. Watch this. The problem is, uh, we see ourselves as grasshoppers. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not an issue of faith. It's an issue of self-esteem. Watch this. We see ourselves as grasshoppers. And watch the caveat that comes behind it in clause B. And the enemy sees us that way. Now this is something that you cannot miss. Uh, when God showed it to me, I almost jumped out of my own skin. What God was saying, watch this. Is the enemy only sees you how you see yourself. Oh, Y'all just missed that. If you don't think you nothing, the enemy will treat you like nothing. But I wonder if there's anybody tonight who knows I'm the head and not the tail. I'm, I'm above. And he put a bad report out. We're not going to make it. This is the end. We've seen our best day. It'll get no better than this. We have already peeked out. Folk ain't gonna follow in this next chapter. So we see ourselves as grasshoppers. Watch this. And, um, and there's 12 of them and they speak, uh, Murphy, in one voice. They speak in one voice, and with one sound, we can't do it because we see ourselves as grasshoppers. I want Bishop Alma right through here um, uh, to give tension to the text uh, and argue eisegetically right through verse number 33 and 34. The problem that I have here is um, I'm trying to figure out how uh, none of the 12 have their bishop spirit. Y'all just missed it. Huh? They've been under a leader. God help me that. That they done seen where God told him hit the rock and water came out. They, they, they've been under a leader. When God told him lift up his hand, the enemy would get scattered. I can't find nobody in here. They, 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 they've been under a leader that when they got to the edge of the Red Sea, God said lift up your eyes. And they walked across in dry ground. Can you have small faith when you've been under Paul Morton? They've been under a leader who has operated in signs and wonders, in miracles, and now they're acting natural. When you have faith, failure is not entertained. It's gonna work. It's, elbow your neighbor, say it's gonna work. It's, don't, don't, don't you let no spy 
try and speak negatively about the fellowship. It's going to work. It's, God, I can't hear nobody. Don't you let nobody talk you out of 20 years of covenant. It's going to work. Don't, don't you get so caught up in a personality that you lose the principle. It's going to work. And they said, um, um, we see ourselves as grasshoppers. And all 12 of them, just like the lepers in the New Testament, walked away. And never said thank you. And I showed up today um, as the 13th spy. I've come tonight as the 13th spy to argue with the 12. There exists a place where you shop for the essentials and end up with a whole lot more. That's not on the list. Where an Olympic...
Well, we're once more and again uh, recording a message for our CD recording uh, on at the Living Word Bible Study and Message of Courage Music Ministry uh, from the Sea Planning Church of the Living Word Baptist Church of Biloxi. Uh, the message is from Pope Francis of the Vatican in Rome, Italy. Uh, the Vatican, of course, is Rome as its own city. The Vatican is its own city. Um, but the Pope is speaking from there to Kenneth Copeland Ministries in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, and also associated with this study or this uh, message to the congregation of, as well, Bishop Tony Palmer. Well, Tony Palmer and Kenneth Copeland are in Fort Worth, where the, the Pope, uh, Francis, is in Rome, Italy. And he is speaking to their audience there, a teleconference communication across the water. Quite a ways, if you know what I mean. Uh, but the Pope is getting his message to, uh, to them on Christian unity that he would like to see um, the brothers and sisters in Christ more caring, more direct, more committed in many ways. And he's speaking from his heart, not just from his language. He's an Italian. He speaks Italian as a native tongue. And um, so it's going to be my pleasure to announce or to uh, interpret some of his language. So let's get ready to hear from uh, Pope Francis of Rome, Italy, the Vatican. Here's the head had Pope there. I think we know that just by the name. Dear brothers and sisters, excuse me because I speak in Italian, but I I'm not uh, speaking English, but uh, I will speak uh, no Italian, no English, but carefully. Dear brothers and sisters, excuse me, because I speak in Italian, but I am not speaking English, but I will speak no Italian, no English, but hardly. È una lingua più semplice e più autentica. E questa lingua del cuore ha un linguaggio e una grammatica speciale. It's a language more simple and more authentic. And this language of the heart has a special, particular language and grammar. Due regole. Ama Dio, soprattutto, e ama l'altro perché il tuo fratello e la tua sorella. E con queste due cose andiamo avanti. A simple grammar, two rules, love God above all and love your neighbor because he is your brother and sister. With these two rules, we can go ahead. Io sono qui con mio fratello, mio vescovo fratello, Tony Panna. I am here with my brother, my bishop brother, Tony Palmer. We have been friends for years. E lui mi ha detto che il vostro compagno, il vostro raduno, è un piacere e di un saluto. Un saluto 
gioioso e nostalgico. He told me, told about your conference, about your meeting, and it's my pleasure to greet you, a greeting both joyful and nostalgic yearning. Gioioso perché a me da gioia che, che voi siete riuniti per lodare Gesù Cristo, l'unico Signore, e per e pregare al Padre e ricevere lo Spirito. E questo dà gioia perché si vede che il Signore lavora in tutto il mondo. E non... Joyous because it gives me joy that you have come together to worship Jesus Christ, the only Lord, and to pray to the Father and to receive the Spirit. This brings me joy because you because we can see that the God of is working all over the world. Succede come nei quartieri fra noi, no? nei quartieri ci sono famiglie che si vogliono e famiglie che non si vogliono, famiglie che si uniscono e famiglie che si separano e noi siamo un po', mi permetto la parola, separati, separati perché i peccati ci hanno separati, i nostri peccati. E... Nostalgic, yearning, because, but... It happens, as within our suburbs, in the suburbs there are families that love each other and families that don't love each other. Families who come together and families who separate themselves. We are kind of, permit me to say, separated. Separated because it's sin that has separated us, all our sins. I malintesi nella storia, ma una lunga strada di peccato. The misunderstandings throughout history. It has been a long road of sins that we all share in. Who is to blame? Comunitario. Ma chi ha la colpa? Tutti abbiamo la colpa. Tutti siamo peccatori. Soltanto uno è giusto, il Signore. Eh. We all share the blame. We all have all sinned. There is only one blameless, the Lord. Io la nostalgia che questa separazione finisca e ci dia la comunione. Io la nostalgia di quell'abbraccio di qua. I am nostalgic, yearning, that this separation come to an end and gives us communion. I am nostalgic, yearning, of that embrace. Nel quale parla la Sacra Scrittura, quando i fratelli di Giuseppe affamati sono andati a Egitto per comprare per poter mangiare ma andavano a comprare avevano i soldi ma non potevano mangiare i soldi the scripture the holy scriptures speak of when Joseph's brothers began to starve from hunger they went to Egypt to buy so that they could eat they went to buy they had money but they could not eat the money. Lì hanno trovato qualcosa più del pasto. 
But there they found something more than food. They found their brother. Tutti noi abbiamo dei soldi, i soldi della cultura, i soldi della nostra storia, di tante ricchezze culturali, anche religiose, tra, tradizioni diverse. All of us have currency, the currency of our culture, the currency of our history. We have lots of culture, riches and religious riches, and we have diverse traditions. e dobbiamo piangere insieme come ha fatto Giuseppe quel pianto che unisce il pianto dell'amore but we have to encounter one another as brothers we must cry together together like Joseph did these tears will unite us the tears of love Io vi parlo come fratello eh? e vi parlo così semplicemente, con gioia e nostalgia, facciamo crescere la nostalgia. I am speaking to you as a brother, I speak to you in a simple way, with joy and nostalgic yearning. Let us allow our nostalgic yearning to grow. Perché questo ci spingerà a trovarci, a abbracciarci. Because this will propel us to find each other, to embrace one another. E a notare Gesù Cristo come unico Signore della storia. Vi ringrazio tanto and together to worship Jesus Christ as the only Lord of history. I thank you profoundly for listening to me. I thank you profoundly for allowing me to speak the language of the heart. And I also ask you a favor. Please pray for me, because I need your prayers, and I will pray for you. I will do it, but I need your prayers. And let's pray to the Lord that he unite us all. Come on, we are brothers. Let's give each other a spiritual hug and let God complete the work that he has begun. And this is a miracle. The miracle of uni- unity has begun. Perché questo è un miracolo. Il miracolo dell'unità è, è incominciato. E dice uno scrittore italiano, il Manzoni, famoso, dice questa frase. A famous Italian author named Manzoni once wrote in his, his novel of a simple man amongst the people who once said this. In un romanzo, un uomo, un uomo semplice del popolo dice questa frase. 
I've never seen God begin a miracle without him finishing it well. Non ho trovato mai che il Signore abbia incominciato un miracolo senza finirlo bene. Lui finirà bene questo miracolo di unità. He will complete this miracle of unity. Vi chiedo di benedirmi e io vi benedico. E fratello a fratello. I ask you to bless me and I bless you. Un abbraccio. Grazie. From brother to brother, I embrace you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, friends. That is the word from the Pope, uh, Pope Francis, in Rome, Italy, and the Vatican of 1.8 million was my last count, uh, parishioners and folks who are serving Christ in, as Roman Catholic or as Catholic under some uh, jurisdiction of a state or of a country. So we praise God for his words of unity and calling out from the, one of the highest, if not the highest, position in the religious service world. Uh, I think we all have great respect for the Pope, uh, Pope Francis, as he is serving in such a grand way, a way that respects all of mankind, and no matter who and where or what you may be from, He's serving the office strong and with great grace. Praise God for what you're hearing and how his voice speaks to each and every uh, person that is hearing his message. We want you to hear at Living Word Baptist Church, at Living Word Bible Study, Get knowledge, get wisdom, but with all thy getting, get an understanding of the vision Yahweh has for your life. Jehovah has for your life. Yahshua has for your life. Pericles has for your life. Get knowledge, get wisdom, but with all thy getting, get an understanding of the vision that he has for your life. The prophetic vision that you're living might not be in vain for people perish without the knowledge of a vision. They are destroyed. God loves you. We do too. Over and out. And he said, wait a minute, boys. He said, we're, we're out. If we stay like we are, we're going to die. America, if we stay like we are, we're going to die. If we keep fighting each other, majoring on the minor, we're going to die. If we don't connect and get our best and brightest, we're going to die. If we don't come together and stop fighting over foolish things, we are going to die. Don't think that we don't have enemies that are ready to take this country. If we don't get together, we are going to die. The things we are fighting about are trivial compared to what we have to lose. We have got to get together or we are going to die. You see, God had already set up that he would have somebody on the inside that was related to somebody on the outside. The reason God does not intend for all of us to be called to the pulpit. I'm, I'm going to say something. It's, it, it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. We don't need no more preachers. We got plenty of preachers. We need some physicians. We need some pilots. We need some lawyers. We need some senators. We don't need no more preachers. We got plenty of preachers. We need some CEOs. 
We need some people that can invade the world systems and go in and take back what the enemy stole from us. We need some people in high places who will fight for us. We need some people that can move the criminal justice system. They're standing there saying, not that boy, not that girl, not my child, not him. I don't need to hear you preach. We need somebody called to a cure for AIDS. Called to a cure for Alzheimer's. Oh, y'all ain't gonna talk back to me. I know I sound like I'm crazy, but if all of us are in the pulpit, who will be in the White House? Who will take over the systems of this world? If all of us are preaching in the pulpit, who will run the networks and the televisions and the satellite systems? We need you to be called into positions like Joseph so that when the church is in a famine, there'll be somebody on the inside talking in tongues and filled with the Holy Ghost and saying, get my devil, get my devil, get prophesy God's going to send you into some new places to do some new things it's a setup if I'm talking to you holler at you boy We got enough revivals. We need a revolution. We need somebody that's going to turn this thing around. We are in a famine for leadership. We got personalities, but not leadership. We got charisma, but not leadership. But God has a plan. He has planted Joseph inside the world systems. There are some Josephs in this house <clears throat> that God is planting you inside the world systems. And it's hard for you sometimes. And you get spread on sometimes. And you get ostracized sometimes. Because the devil doesn't want you inside the world systems. But I came to tell Joseph, hang on in there. Y'all ain't ready for me. Don't let them run you out of your spot, Joseph. Hang on in there. Don't you give up your position. Don't give up your business. Don't give up your company. Hang on in there. Because the enemy doesn't want you to be strategically placed in a position where you can make a difference. He's trying to run you out. He don't mind you dancing. He don't want you to deliver nothing. He don't mind you clapping your hands as long as you clap it with no cash. He doesn't mind you running up and down the aisle as long as you don't own anything. Oh, but I want to serve notice on the devil today. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. I wish I had 10 people in here who were ready for revolution. While, while Christians are 
complaining about the media and complaining and complaining and complaining about the media. And all of that time we spent complaining about the media, we could have bought a network. We could have built a network. But because we have the mentality of slaves, We waiting on a nice massa. If we get a nice massa, everything gonna be all right. I don't need a nice master. I am a master. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. I'm not waiting on a nice master. I'm not waiting on somebody to hire me, I'll hire myself. Feel a breakthrough. About to take this place this morning. You ain't got to give me a job. I'll give you a job. Somebody shout in this house. The book said the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. God planted Joseph in the kingdom for such a time as this. We could get the loan approved for the church if one of the church members was the bank president. We don't need no more preaching. We need some presidents. We need some loan officers. We need some CPA companies. We need some real estate development companies. We need to infiltrate the world's systems. I'm telling you the trouble that you're going through right now is a setup for a shift. God is getting you out of your comfort zone so he can shift the way you think because God is about to plant you in a big thing. Your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. Neither has entered into your heart what God has in store for you.